For example, the prophet Hosea says this, quote, Thus says the Lord, Therefore, behold, I will allure her, meaning Israel, I will bring her into the wilderness, the desert, and I will speak tenderly to her. Literally, I will speak to her heart. And there she shall answer, as in the days of her youth, as at the time when she came out of the land of Egypt. Hosea 2. Then again, Ezekiel 16 prophesies, quote, I will remember my covenant with you in the days of your youth, and I will establish with you an everlasting covenant. I will establish my covenant with you, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I forgive all that you have done. So note that. When's this new marriage going to take place? When God forgives their sins. And then finally, Isaiah 54, Isaiah says to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Jerusalem, for you will forget the shame of your youth. For your maker is your husband. Wow. Your maker is your husband. What kind of God is this? The Lord of hosts is his name. The Holy One of Israel is your redeemer. The God of the whole earth he is called. Isaiah 54, 4 to 6. Now, this is just a sampling here. There's lots more in the prophets that we could look at. I mean, we didn't even touch on the fact that the Song of Songs, right, was treated as an allegory. It was read by the ancient rabbis as an allegory of Yahweh the bridegroom and Israel the bride, all right? But if you want to find out more about that, you'll have to get my book, Jesus the Bridegroom, <laughs> the greatest love story in the book, right? I deal with the Song of Songs in that in some depth, okay? But for now, I want you to see, notice what the prophets are saying. God's going to win his people back. God's, he wants to get his bride back. So in that first line from Hosea, what's he say? All right, how do I get her back? Hmm. I think we need to go on a second honeymoon. Right? I'm going to allure her. I'm going to speak tenderly to her. And I'm going to draw her out. Now, where can we go? Hmm. Cancun. Uh, we could go to the Rockies, do a little skiing maybe, you know? Maybe on an Alaskan cruise. No, 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 I got it. The Sinai Desert. <laughs> where it's 130 degrees in the day and 20 degrees at night and there's scorpions and snakes, nothing to eat, nothing to drink. It's perfect. Okay. This should strike us as somewhat odd, right? This is not the place you go to renew your marriage, okay? Why in the world does God want to bring Israel out into the desert? Well, see, the problem he's got is that his bride is too in love with the things of the world, right? With pleasure and power, right? The lust of the flesh and all these things. So he's got to get her away from that so she can fall back in love with him. That's why he goes to the desert, which, by the way, is, is what Lent's all about, right? It's 40 days in the desert with Jesus to rekindle the love for Him that so often is smothered by our love for the things of the world. Prayer, fasting, almsgiving.